In 2022, Hong Kong Customs seized six tons of illegal drugs. The haul, taken in from January to November, had a street value of more than 3.1 billion Hong Kong dollars. But drugs are not all that's being smuggled. That's according to the Hong Kong Marine Police. The most popular items smuggled from Hong Kong to mainland are frozen meats, used mobile phone, electronic device, and dried seafood. Recently, we detected some smuggling cases with importations of live cats and dogs from mainland to Hong Kong. More than 640 tons of illegal wildlife products were seized in 2018 and 2019. The items worth 207 million Hong Kong dollars included live pangolins, elephant tusks, sea turtles, and shark fins. For decades, law enforcement resources have been poured into stopping criminal goods trafficking. And yet, it remains a problem, according to a crime expert at the University of Hong Kong. I have to say, in the past 10 or 20 years, Hong Kong has already become one of the uh, financial hub in terms of drug trafficking. The government, however, has a different take. It says that Hong Kong is a logistics hub with systems in place for the smooth flow of passengers and goods. And that is why the city often ends up along the path of illicit trading. So how did Hong Kong become known as a smuggling hub? Considering its location in the middle of the Asia-Pacific region, its proximity to mainland China, and its massive deep water port, it's no wonder Hong Kong has become a convenient place for smuggling. But to begin the conversation about why smuggling occurs here, we have to take it back to the mid-19th century opium wars. England exported opium to China, mostly by smuggling. The drug became pervasive and widespread abuse caused serious social problems. China's ruling Qing dynasty burned opium poppy fields and passed laws banning trade of the plant. That, of course, made British officials unhappy and eventually triggered war. The British won the conflict, and as a result, the Qing government lost control of Hong Kong in 1842. Under the peace terms, it was also forced to reopen China to foreign trade, including drugs and other illegal goods. Britain joined forces with France to win a second opium war. And by 1860, the Qing dynasty was forced to legalize trade of the highly addictive drug. Only finally banned during Japanese occupation in World War II, the legacy of the opium trade would last for many more decades. This 1978 footage shows 102-year-old Lee So Hing after British colonial authorities seized opium smoking equipment from her flat. Born in 1877, Lee said she had smoked for half of her life and admitted to her addiction. The drug is my lifeline without which I would die. Lee's story was just one of thousands that started during a time when Hong Kong was a flourishing opium trading center. But who has controlled the flow of drugs? Since the 1960s, smuggling and manufacturing of various drugs have mainly been controlled by a local organized crime group called the Chu Chow Triad Society. Triad mules often smuggled illegal goods into Victoria Harbor by seemingly inconspicuous small boats. Sea smuggling is an organized illegal activity which can make considerable profit. Intelligence suggests that Triad society have involved in this illegal business due to the big profits. But how did the triads get involved? Then when the Communist Party took over the sovereignty of China, seems that many, many rich people, especially those uh, capitalists, they fled to Taiwan, a lot of uh, businessmen. They also came to Hong Kong. And among them, some of them, well, after they uh, came to Hong Kong, uh, many of them, well, eventually they joined some gangs and then they started to do some criminal uh, business, especially amongst some of those uh, 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 parties would be one uh, particular stream from uh, Qiu Zhao. Part of this uh, Qiu Zhao army, they also uh, went to Thailand, Cambodia, and uh, that's why they have a close link with the Golden Triangle over there. 
where there is a lot of、uh, opium farming. In the 50s and 60s, as I mentioned, because of the Chiu Chao Gang in Hong Kong,、uh, they, they can smuggle a lot of uh, uh, opium through the fishing boats and then into the Hong Kong harbor and then sell them to China and many other countries all over the world. So, In, in the late 1950s, there were,、uh, starting, the Hong Kong government started to、uh, build a lot of、uh, public housing estates. But、uh, geographically and spatially,、uh, these are housing estates.、Uh, uh, in fact, they provided a lot of crime opportunities for the drug syndicates to do their business. They utilized these、uh, open space in between those uh, uh, housing estates. Uh, they have、uh, tea house, brothels, gambling stores. There are many unlawful uh, activities uh, 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 over these areas. Globalization has since allowed the triads to evolve into a larger transnational organized crime group with a network of smugglers that take advantage of Hong Kong's status as a free port. Marine police today use handheld X ray technology to search intercepted vessels. The device displays an image in real time, allowing quick scans of concealed compartments. In some detected cases, officers conduct detailed search with searching equipment during the vessel checks and successfully find smuggled goods inside secret or concealed compartments in the vessels. Despite emerging technologies to find the goods, smuggling activity by sea was on the rise. At least until 2022. Due to the long standing defenses of excise duties and taxes between Hong Kong and mainland, and the cross boundary implementations of COVID 19 quarantine measures, we observed a significant increase of sea smuggling activity in 2020 and in 2021. In 2022, we saw a significant decrease in the total number of the sea smuggling cases. And seizures of the smuggled goods. Quan said pandemic controls made it more difficult for mules to smuggle small shipments by air or sea. On January 8, 2023, Hong Kong and the mainland began the process of reopening its borders. With the gradual return to normality, the pressure on police anti smuggling efforts is bound to increase. But is Hong Kong prepared to deal with it?